Welcome to another AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. We're going to address basic drilling fluids concepts in hopes that we can tackle far more complex problems in the future. Shale inhibition is one of the most important aspects of a drilling fluid system when it comes to drilling reactive formations. In the presence of fresh water, many reactive formation clays will swell and disperse. This can cause many negative consequences, such as washout, wellbore instability, high torque and drag, and stuck pipe. In this tech tip, we'll discuss the different mechanisms to prevent clay swelling and dispersion, as well as provide an overview of common shale inhibitors and their functions. Shale inhibition refers to the chemical alteration that takes place between the clay layers in a shale formation in order to prevent hydration and swelling. Clays are typically composed of sheets or layers of aluminosilicate minerals in which the outer layer possesses a negative charge. As such, cations are readily adsorbed onto the surface and the exchanging of these cations with other ions impacts the tendency of the clay to swell in the presence of water. This is especially noteworthy because it helps to limit clay dispersion. As more water is adsorbed between clay layers, the individual layers can break away from each other, leading to an accumulation of colloidal fines in a fluid system that are difficult to remove with conventional solids control equipment. Commonly used shale inhibitors are polyamines and glycols. Polyamines contain active nitrogen groups that interchange with cations located on the outer layers of clays. This strengthens the intermolecular forces between the clay layers and reduces the amount of water that can be adsorbed. Similarly, glycol-based additives provide inhibition through chemical adsorption as well as through a mechanism known as the cloud point phenomenon. At temperatures above the cloud point, glycol solubility changes from totally soluble to insoluble, resulting in a microemulsion that improves filter cake quality and protects clay pore spaces through plugging. Brine fluids and base oils also provide significant inhibitive properties in drilling fluid systems. Brine fluids help to prevent water invasion into the formation via wellbore osmosis due to the salt concentration gradient between the drilling fluid and formation fluid. Potassium chloride should be noted as the similarity in diameter between a potassium ion and the clay lattice space results in tight spacing between clay interlayers, minimizing clay hydration. When treating with potassium chloride for inhibition, levels can be depleted and should be checked to ensure sufficient concentrations are maintained. In invert emulsion systems, base oils in conjunction with a wetting agent ensure solids remain oil wet, preventing clay hydration. A common shale encapsulator is PHPA, or partially hydrolyzed polyacrylamide. This anionic liquid polymer attaches to clays, essentially coating them, to block water invasion and hydration. PHPA can also aid in shale stabilization by increasing filtrate viscosity, limiting the depth and rate of invasion into the wellbore. Additionally, more efficient removal of drill cuttings is seen at surface, due to the structural integrity of shale cuttings remaining intact. It is typically used in low solids, non-dispersed, freshwater drilling fluid due to its lack of tolerance for high pH and calcium. Further, the encapsulating mechanism is not partial only to clay solids. It can encapsulate and remove chemical additives and weight material as well. Another example is amine-based additives. The active groups can provide inhibition through cation exchange as well as encapsulation by adsorbing to negative sites around clay molecules. While the importance of shale inhibition is undisputed, unnecessary costs can be seen by an operator when a fluid is over-engineered in relation to inhibition additives. Depending on the reactivity of the formations being drilled, it can make more sense to drill with a dispersed drilling fluid using deflocculants. Historically used best practices as well as comprehensive testing and fluid screening is needed when deciding on an inhibitor package for a drilling fluid system. We have gone through the testing and analysis performed to provide comprehensive shale characterization and the inhibition mechanisms used to prevent clay hydration and dispersion.
Stay tuned for the third episode of this three-part tech tip where we summarize what we've learned and provide an example of the process for shale testing and fluid screening for inhibitor packages. That concludes this AES Drilling Fluids Tech Tip. Stay tuned for the next one, and if you want to learn more, have a listen to The Flow Line, our podcast. And if you want to improve your drilling fluid performance, reach out to us at AES Drilling Fluids, where better fluids equal better wells.